Hey, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. we joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. Mike sent uh, just a doozy this week. Uh, we have to do a lookup to one of these sh one of these worksheets here, ton 7.5, tons 10, uh, and so on, based on that cell. And once we get there, it's a two-way lookup uh, because we have to both find the bridge span and the railway span. Uh, so I thought, oh my gosh, this is going to be really, really difficult. But then I noticed that all four of these worksheets are exactly identical. They they have the same values in column A and the same values in column B, and it's a really nice small size table. And I thought, wait, rather than try and complicate this, um, well, first of all, I would combine all of these into one worksheet if this were me. Um, but for whatever reason, we haven't, and so we have to deal with this. Uh, I kind of came up. I don't know, you might say I'm cheating. I I just built some formulas that say, hey, based on the bridge span they chose and the runway span they chose, figure out where which row has that answer. Uh, so this little formula up here just does a little calculation, you know, trying to figure out uh, you know, which section it starts in uh, because there's four runway spans for each bridge span. And once I know that, which row it ends up in, uh, I'm really kind of home free. I just uh, came back here, did an indirect of whatever's in cell A2 uh, joined with the word tons and then the exclamation point uh, F1 to F17 that's where the answers are every time and then instead of hard coding a 5 in there we will paste in my little formula to come up with the correct row and uh, there you have it uh, not a good solution if they're going to be changing that table but I'm guessing that these are engineering numbers that have been in place for decades and here we are, we just need you know, a simple solution to go in and grab the value from the right sheet. There you have it. Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Wow, that is amazing right there. Now, I have to admit something. Raymond3031 from YouTube and Mr. Excel message board, same username, asked this question, and I just made this data up. I don't know whether the data was the same on each sheet, but look at what Mr. Excel did. He took this data, recognized a pattern, and then being the math genius that he is, created this amazing formula to look up the row. Totally amazing. All right. Um, and then, of course, he did index. And the cool thing here, since there's multiple columns, in essence, we have multiple lookup areas, he did recognize that tons is on each sheet. And the only thing that was changing was the actual, on the sheet name, was this number. So he created a text string uh, with indirect that converts this reference to, uh, as a text string to an actual reference. In essence, looking up different tables. Totally amazing. Now I'm going to take. Uh, slightly different tact. I'm going to look at this as two criteria we have to look up, and we have multiple ranges. So um, on the 10, we'll have to look on the 10 sheet. When we select 7.5, we'll have to look on the 7.5 sheet. Now I'm going to do this uh, based on names. So I actually want to name uh, on sheet tons 2, I want to name bridge span 2 column, bridge span 2. On the tons 3, I need to name this column. Bridge span three. Now I actually typed in these threes because the the uh, sheet name, the column names are the same on each sheet. But I just put a five at the end of each one to indicate that that's a different name for this particular column. Now let's highlight all of the sheets. I'm going to hold Shift and F10, and I actually just want to pre-highlight each sheet. Because I'm going to create a lot of defined names, but I'm going to do it quickly with keyboard shortcuts. Now, all this did is I selected them, selected that range. I'm going to click over here to deselect it, and you can see that each sheet is selected. Now, I'm going to name each column the name that sits in row, row one with the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift F3, create names from selection. Notice it knows that the names are in the top row. I'm going to click OK. Just to check, I'm going to click the name drop down. Boom, just like that. Now I'm going to use keyboard shortcuts to jump to each sheet, and then the keyboard shortcut Control Shift F3. To get to the next sheet, Control Page Down. That you can see right here, the next sheet is selected, and then Control Shift F3, Enter. Control Page Down, Control Shift F3, Enter. 
Control page down, Control shift F3, enter. Control page down, Control shift F3, enter. And then you can see real quickly with those keyboard shortcuts, wow. I mean, that would be hard to do without knowing those keyboard shortcuts. But the point here is now I have a unique name. You can see that bridge span 3. Whereas on this other sheet, that column is called bridge span 7.5. All right, now I'm going to create those named columns I need to look up as a text string. So I'm going to come here, equals, and I'm going to create a formula. Put that bridge span in double quotes, ampersand, and boom. Now I'm actually going to use this again, copy. Bridges span 10. There's our uh, reference. So I'm going to do that again here, and then I'm a bad typer, so I'm going to control V. Runway span 10. Come here, equals, double quotes, come to the end, and control V. Now you can see if we change this. We have our references. Ah, but those are text strings. This is a text string. If we try to use that in a formula, it won't work. No problem. We'll use the indirect function. That can take a text string and convert it to a reference. I'm going to use the lookup function, index the array. Well, it's this one right here. So I just simply put that name into indirect. And if we highlight this and hit the F9 key, you can clearly see it worked. It's looking over at uh, the 7.5 sheet and getting that column, Control Z. That's the array. Now, th this is in essence how we look up different tables, right? Comma. Now, the next trick is our two criteria lookup. Well, I'm going to use the match function. The match function is great. It can tell you the ordinal position, which for us is row number. The lookup value, well, we have two lookup values, and I don't want to. I want one, so I'm simply going to join them. Shift 7 is ampersand, the join symbol. Now, you can highlight this in F9 and see, sure enough, from two criteria, it created one. Control Z. Now, we need to do the same thing for our two columns. There's our column reference, column reference as text, so we use indirect. And we simply join it, just as we did our uh, individual criteria. Now, when you join these two columns, you can go ahead and hit F9 and see, sure enough, it, it's going to, from two columns, create a single column. F9, there's that semicolon in array syntax. It means go to the next row. So we have created a single column from two. Now, when you join two columns, it is an array and requires the keyboard shortcut Control Shift Enter. Array, comma, zero, match. We're going to put a zero for match type. Close parentheses on that. Close parentheses on the index. Control Shift Enter. Now you can see the curly brackets up there. Um, because we did Control Shift Enter, that's Excel telling us that it understands it's an array. Let's test this. Sure enough, that is the correct value. One other thing, though, whenever you have an array like this, Control Shift Enter, if you don't like that Control Shift Enter, you can just slap that uh, array we put into the index function. Now, what does that do? That argument right there can handle arrays without Control Shift Enter. If you come to the end, and for the row argument, you leave it blank. So all I did was put a comma, leave it blank. It's programmed then to deliver not a single item from that, but the entire range, which in our case is an entire column. And then I don't have to use Control Shift Enter. W Enter. And there it is, no uh, curly brackets. I'm going to test it one time. Two, I'm going to go find the 26 and 24, and it better be 524. 26, 24. And sure enough, it works. All right, throw it back to Mr. Excel. Well, hey, Mike, that was cool. There you have it. Uh, many ways to solve every problem. Yours would work with any table. Uh, they, even if they make changes, mine uh, very specific to just quickly solve a problem. I hope everyone enjoyed that. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.